Hey, are you one of those people who've had their Instagram flooded with images of beautiful Smith Array pedal boards? Or you've seen Dan and Mick on that pedal show and the myriad of boards that they have? But like me, your pockets are empty and you can't afford to buy one. Well, if so, today is your lucky day because we're gonna have a look at seeing if we can build one for ourselves. So the object of this video is to turn this into this and finally into this. Now, if you're thinking that you need a state-of-the-art workshop to be able to build one of these boards, fear not. I don't have one. I have a little hole behind my studio, and as such, I built all this outside on the back porch on a bench that my wife uses to put her plants on. Now, as far as tools goes, I had a bandsaw that I used to cut the curves. If you don't have a bandsaw, you can use a jigsaw or even a coping saw. The next thing you'll need is a router so you can trim all the edges with the templates and round all the edges off. We're gonna need a drill. You'll need something to cut the boards out. Now, a table saw would be perfect. I didn't have one of those either, so I used a circular saw and made a DIY saw table. You could also use a hand saw or you could use a track guide for a circular saw they'll all do the job the last thing we'll need will be some drill bits square some rulers a pencil a bit of double-sided tape now to plan my smith array board i did a bit of internet stalking so i jumped on their instagram and i found any images that i could find from their factory floor i also went to their website and if you click on the board that you're looking to build they actually have a list of dimensions down the bottom now most of those dimensions will be what you want but there's a few that you'll have to calculate to get the final dimensions of your product the question i've been asked the most about with this is how i got the curves on my board and what i did was i used a template like this now make Making the template's actually pretty easy. The most important measurements on your template are going to be the inside edges of your pedal board. So if you look on mine, I've actually marked those lines in. Now this is what we're going to base all of our measurements for the slots, for the joins, for the backs and sides off. So it really needs to be accurate. Now what I worked out from their measurements is that the inside length is going to be 350 mils, your back is going to be 110 mil and your front is gonna be 40 mil. So to make my template, I simply grabbed a board and I marked out the baseline and then my front and back, made sure that my angles are totally square. And once I'd marked out the lines for my floor and my front and back, I added 12 mils and that's because I'm using 12 mil ply. If you use a different thickness, you're gonna obviously have to add that thickness to the outside edges of those initial lines. Now to get the feet, wasn't too hard. I simply measured down five mil from the front and then I took 40 mil down from the back. I drew a line across. The back angle here is gonna be a 45 degree angle. The length of the feet, they're both the same. So 80 mils, 80 mils. This angle's 45. And then to get this angle here, I simply measured 125 mil from the front back to here. And then I followed that with a line up there. So from the bottom of the foot, to that 125 mil mark. That gave me this angle. The little angle on the front is literally a round over. So I did that on some sandpaper. Now the next thing is the tricky part is the curve. You can actually place the steel ruler on your 40 mil mark and also at your 110 mark and you can adjust your curve that way. So if you've got someone to help you, you can get your curve to where you want it and where you're happy with and then just mark that out. I'm home alone, so I'm just gonna cheat and use my other template to put those marks in get my angles roughly right there. Now the next part of this is obviously cutting it out. Now the important thing with this is we're not trying to get it perfect, we're just trying to get as close to the line as we can without going over the line because we're going to use some sandpaper and a flat surface to smooth out our template and that's where the time's going to be put in because the more accurate that your template is then the better a product you're going to produce and also it's going to be repeatable. The next thing that we need to do is to cut up our ply board into the sizes that we need to make our pedal board. Now, before we start, we want to make sure that we square up the blade on our saw table, or if we've made a DIY saw table like mine, make sure it's square. I forgot to do this once and I wrecked some boards and had to redo it all. And the first thing we're going to do is cut out a strip of timber for our base and for our front and back. Whatever size you choose doesn't matter. The important thing is that you add the width of the sheet of ply board to the end of your actual board itself. So for example, let's pretend this was 250 mils wide, so I was gonna make an SA250. Then what I would need to do, because I'm using 12 mil ply, is add 12 mil to that. So that's gonna give me 262 mils. The reason we wanna add that on is because later on, we're gonna route out the edges to create a tongue, and that's gonna be part of the joint that's gonna hold this board together. 
Once we've cut out our strip of wood, that's the width of our base, we then actually need to cut the piece for our base and also for our front and back. Now the reason we cut the big long strip first is that our base front and back are exactly the same width. So even if you are a little bit out by a mill or something like that, it's not gonna affect your end product because they're all gonna be the same width. Super nice, no gaps. Now the length of my base is 362 mils. That's because the interior of the spinner ray board is 350 and then I add 12 mils onto that for the tongues on either side. And then my front is gonna be 40 mils and then my back is gonna be 110. The last piece of timber that we're going to need to cut is going to be for our second tier. Now, you can make this any length that you want as far as that goes. It just really depends on what your pedals are. I have a switcher on my board, so I made it a little bit wider, but the important measurements that you wanna take into account is that the solid parts where your pedal board tape goes are 50 mils, the gaps are 30 mils, that way you can fit a pancake plug through there. So you can make any combination up of that that you want. On my particular board, it's 185 mils in width. So make sure you cut that one last. The other thing you'll need to do with that board is probably trim about two mils off the length, and that's so it can fit comfortably inside the top of your pedal board. Now, next job is to mark out our sides on the piece of timber that's left over. What you wanna make sure that you do is you transfer these lines from your template onto the board that you're gonna cut out. And you wanna extend those lines a fair way because we're gonna use those to route the slots, which forms the second half of our joints. Once you've got those lines on the board, we need to work out where to place our router guide. Now the first thing we're gonna do is double-sided tape a straight piece of timber to a piece of scrap. But then gonna get our router and pressing it hard against our little fence that we've made. We're gonna make a cut. Once we've done that, we can measure from the piece of timber to the outside of the cut. Now, on my particular router, it's 48 mils. It's gonna be different depending on which router you've got, but you wanna remember that measurement because we're going to add that to the lines that we've marked out onto our piece of timber. Now that we've marked out our lines and we've drawn around our template, the next job is to place down a temporary router template. And we're just gonna use some straight pieces of timber. I'm gonna double-sided tape them down. That's gonna hold them well enough for this. If you wanted to make more of these boards, you could literally make a proper template for this. Um, but this is a one-off, so we're not gonna to go to the hassle. Now that we've got our router template down, we're just gonna do a plunge cut. And we're going to go across the bottom edge first, from front to back. Now remember with this, probably start off with a three mil depth. The slot will actually need to be six to seven mils. So you'll probably want to do it in a couple of passes. Route the base first, then route the front and back. Now just remember when you're routing the slots for the front and the back, you want to stop roughly four mils inside the outline of your side. Now that our slots have routed out, we're gonna jump over onto the bandsaw and we're actually gonna cut out the shape of our sides. Now just remember, Stay close to the line, but don't cross the line because we're gonna finish this off with a template bit on our router. Now that we've rough cut out our sides, we're gonna take the right hand one and we're going to mark out the dimensions for the cutout for our connector box. Now for mine, it's 50 mils high by 80 mils wide. I'm going to mark that five mil up from the floor of the pedal board. And once we've got it marked out, we're gonna do that same thing that we did with the blocks of timber to make a router guide. So we're just gonna place those pieces of pine around the outside edge of our cutouts. We're then gonna use our drill and we're going to drill out as much material as we can. Once that's done, we're gonna jump over to our router table or our router and we're gonna use a router bit to get rid of the rest of it. And then just our template bit, we're just gonna use that to cut out a nice clean opening in our side. And when it's finished, it should look like this. So now we should have our sides rough cut out. We also should have cut out the slot for our connector box. So the next job is to grab our template, grab some double-sided tape, put it back on the sides. Now make sure you keep that template lined up perfectly within your outline that you've drawn on the, on the timber in the first place. And remember those lines that we drew through dark on the template? Try and line those up with the lines that should still be, you should still see a bit of it on the timber. Now we're gonna jump back over to our router using a template bit and we're just gonna smooth the edges off so that it matches up with the template like this. 
Okay, we're nearly to the end of all the stuff we need to do with the tools. So the last thing we need to take care of is our base and our front and back. The first thing we're gonna do is round a tongue around all four edges of the base. We're gonna do the same thing on the sides of the front and the back as well. Now, as far as the dimensions of the tongue go, remember that we routed the slots in the side so that they were six to seven mils deep. So what we wanna do is we wanna make the tongue or that little cutout for the tongue is gonna to be six mil. So what I do is I'm setting my fence up so that when I run the board flush against the fence, it's going to route out a six mil wide slot now, of course, the other half of the slot is going to depend on what size router bit you routed the slots out with. Now, I used a six mil bit, so I'm gonna raise my router up so that it sticks six mils above the table, and that's gonna give me basically a tongue that is six mil by six mil. So when we're finished, we'll have that tongue around all four sides of the base, and also on the two sides of both the front and the back. When that's done, we then need to grab our front and back again, and we need to cut the groove that the base is going to fit into. Now as far as the slot goes in the front and back, the slot is going to be six mils wide, which is how wide my router bit is. And I've actually brought it down so that this little part here that you can see is six mils. So essentially the outside of my cut is going to be 12 mils in. That's going to latch onto there. And you can see that that gives me my base. And then the bottom of the board is going to be flush with the bottom of the front edge. So we just set up our fence so that the router blade sticks out by six mil. And we're just gonna run our front and back across that. Now the thing to remember is when you route the slot, you wanna flip it over so that now the tongue will be on the bottom. That way you're not gonna mess up and everything's gonna line up perfectly when you go to put it together. And once you've routed your grooves, you've got your tongues done on the sides of your front and back, the next thing you wanna do is round off the edges. And with these boards, you actually round off all four edges of the board. So we just use our round over bit on our router again, and we can go across the top and bottom edges of both the back and also the front. The last thing we're gonna do is cut the tongue back so that it's the same width as that slot. That way, when we put them together, so if you can see this, see it like that? That tongue is gonna to fit in there perfectly. The grooves are gonna line up. That's gonna do that front and back. So if you follow me along this far, you should end up with something like this. There's all our inside edges. The base is nice and flush. Now, I would highly recommend grain filling this before you paint it. I'm not gonna go into how you paint it because I suck at painting. Um, I've made a few mistakes on my other one, which I've got to fix and it's taken me more time. But you can clear coat it, you can stain it, you can paint it a solid coat and then block it back and polish it up just like you would if you're building a guitar or painting a car. Totally up to you. For your second tier, you'll just mount your hinges here and here, and then mount the tier in the top, and then obviously your, your catches down on the sides. And that depends what catches you get and what hinges you get. They're pretty straightforward to put in. Hopefully this has helped you and you've got some ideas on how you can build your own Smith Array board. Um, if you're gonna give this a go, let me know down in the comments below. If you've got any questions, queries, or there's a way that you think I could do it better, let me know down below. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It doesn't take much time, doesn't hurt, and it helped me a lot. Anyway, until the next video, cheers.